You want to create strata here. If you have the wire a little bit further away, and you're gonna, uh, I'm going to go through all the details uh, on how to install it. Along with the strata heat mat, the wire, that sets you up for a 25 year system water warranty. Strata heat. This is the system with the wire. The thermostat with the sensor. This is actually inside the box. I just took it out to show you. And then there's another sensor in here. So we get two sensors. The instructions. This is the mat. So I'm going to show you exactly how to install all of this. Okay, so yesterday I installed a strata heat uh, on this floor. This is, this is a master bathroom floor. The um, shower is already done. So I installed the mat. These are the sheets you can buy, which are 39, by 30, 8.2 feet per sheet. So one of these sheets here is 8.2 feet. And in a box, you can buy them individually, or you can buy a box, comes with 10 sheets. You can also get these in a roll, 150 foot roll, if, you, if that's the way you go. Um, the sheets, sit really flat as you can see here because they're flat in the box so there's no curl on them. Uh, the rolls tend to have a little bit of a curl but it's actually not bad for this system. So I just want to do a quick overview of what I did yesterday just so that you have it all in one spot. Uh, I'm going to go through all the details uh, on how to install it and how to test it and what you need uh, to do that. So, first thing was, now as I show, as I show the video, here we have, I spaced it it's every three pucks or castellations as they call them. So it's every three pucks, one, two, three, 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 etc., etc. You also have the option of going uh, alternating two, three, two, three, two, three, or you have the option of going every four pucks. That's going to give you more wattage per foot depending on the configuration you do. You figure all that out, they have a chart when you buy it, you figure out what your square footage is that you need to heat, and then depending on the configuration of the wire, you're going to be able to determine what size wire you need. <clears throat> now, there are a few rules to follow. You don't want to go right up against the wall. You don't want to go right up against the wall. You want to stay at least three inches away from, from the wall and immovable objects. Like here, there's going to be a vanity. So the vanity is going to go up to that line there. So we want to stay three inches away from that line. So we don't want to have wire under the vanity where it's covered. Now, three inches away is the minimum, but you can stay further away if you want. Another thing that that does is if you have the wire a little bit further away, and you're going to figure that into your calculations when you figure out what wire you want. If you run a bit long on the wire, the wire that you get is a bit too long. Now you have an added area where you can run the wire to get closer to the wall to use that up. So that's one benefit. So another thing, now I have the wires running through to the, to the box here. If you have 
if you have conduits that come from the box and go down to the, to the floor where the wire comes out, you're going to have a separate conduit for the wire and you're going to have a separate conduit for the sensor. The reason for that is because the sensor and the, the sensor wire can be affected by uh, interference, can be affected by interference from the, from the main, uh, main uh, wire. So you should, ha you should have them in separate conduits. You don't want to run them in the same conduit. A conduit is like a tube that goes down from the box down to the floor. So you want to have two separate ones. In this case, we just have the wall cavity that is just running up the wall cavity. So we just snake it through the wall cavity. You're going to test the wire as I'm going to show you. You're going to need a multimeter like I have here. You don't need anything else. And you're going to have this page where you're going to fill out your results. You're going to put in the model number of the wire. So you're going to put in the so model number of the wire here. And then you're going to test the wire. You're going to test the wire. The wire has a resistance on here 15.6 and it has also the model number on there and you're gonna find that model number and that's there's a chart and I actually marked it here so that I wouldn't lose it and go the wrong way so this is see if I can get into it a little bit so that's the model number so when and it gives you a range of your testing reference resistant band so it's going to give you a wrench so when you test it so the actual is 15.6 so when you test it it has to fall between the 14.8 and the 16.4 you're going to test it three times but you're only going to record it twice so you test it when it comes out of the box well it's still in the box actually you test it and you see what you get and you're also going to test the sensors then you test it once you got it in the floor but you're not going to record that number you're just going to test it make sure that it still falls within that number then you're going to once you install the tile that's what i'm doing today you're going to um, test it again and that's resistance right here sorry and that's resistance right here after you test it and they give you different spaces if you've got more than one wire so um, the, the thermostat here, the thermostat here goes vertically, goes vertically like this. Now, a little bit about the mat. The mat is an uncoupling membrane. I'm not going to go into the specifics on uncoupling membrane works. I have plenty of videos about that. I might link to a video about Stratomat and how that works in the description. So if you want to know how uh, a uncoupling membrane works, I'll link to that. The Strata Heat is an uncoupling membrane and you get all the benefits of an uncoupling membrane. You want to install this if you're going over plywood. You want to make sure you use the proper thin set for a plywood or a wood subfloor. I'm going to go into more detail uh, in that in the video. If I can, I'm going to have my uh, rep, Matt Bunzel, uh, add a little uh, video into this to tell us all about the warranty and what you get when you use uh, this system, uh, all that product. And when you use something like, I believe you have the 254 Platinum there on site, when you use our, uh, say, 254 Platinum along with the Strata heat mat, the wire, and you're using Permacolor Grout, that sets you up for a 25-year system water warranty with Laticrete. And that includes... Uh, so, uh, so that's the basic overview of the system. Now, one important thing. So when you're putting these systems down, you don't want to use a lightweight mortar. I love lightweight mortars. They're great. Uh, they're creamy, uh, they, they do 
reach on, but there are certain circumstances where you don't want to use them, and this is one of them. Heat wires, heat wires, heating systems love mass. So what that means is you have the, the heat wire heats up the mass, the thin set, and, uh, and, and the tile, and it brings it to a, to a temperature. And the more mass it has, the, um, the longer it'll stay warm. So, because lightweight thin sets don't have quite as much mass, they're not as dense, the system is less efficient. So, when you're using a heating system like this, you want to make sure you use a regular type mortar. Inside the box, you're going to find the manual, and inside the manual, are all instructions and this is the page that you're going to need to, rec to, um, to record all your testing. So you're going to need a multimeter. If you've got alligator clips it's going to make your life a lot easier. Okay, so I need the wires the, the two, two sensors and the wire to test this I can put away for now. I don't need this till later. Okay, so take the wire from the box. So just gonna unwrap that. Grab your leaves. And read the resistance on here is 15.6 ohms. That's what we're going to test. And you're going to test this three times once when you take it out of the box, once when you put it in the mat, and once when you install the tile. So I'm going to find my wire in the chart so I have the reference numbers to compare my results to. So as I said, the reading on here is 15.6 and it has to fall within this range here, 14.8 to 16.4. So let's test it. So I'm going to set my multimeter on 200. Connect one to one side, one to the other side, see what my reading is, 16, and it has to be between 14.8 and 16.4. So I'm within that range, so I'm good. So I'm gonna record my readings on this page. On this page, you cut this out and you send it to Laticry for your, for your uh, warranty. Set your meter to the alarm. When you touch these two, it's gonna beep. So if I you put one on one lead and the other, no beeping. If, if there was a break, you'd hear this. You'd hear this sound. So check the other wire. So it's all. Good. Remember to look at your meter when you're doing this test to make sure that you don't get any readings. It should read I, or your meter might have some other indication uh, to indicate that there is no break in the wire. So model number, resistance, power. Okay, so now I'm going to test the sensor. So 
I'll set this to 20k. 14.4, and I record that in here. This is the first test. Now that I put down all my mat, I'm gonna put in the wall uh, in, in the wire. I'm gonna test it again, but you don't need to record it. Then once the tiles are installed, we'll test it again, and then this is where we record the final final numbers. Okay, so we're installing. Heat mat on the plywood subfloor. This is actually OSD Atlantic. So you want to use a proper thin set to install the mat on this substrate. So because this is a plywood or wood subfloor, we're going to need to use the proper thin set. Laticrete 254 Platinum, which is a very high quality thin set. When you're installing anything to a wood subfloor, you have to use the proper thin set. There are po uh, there's polymer modified thin sets, two of which will work on plywood, one of which will not. So this is an ANSI A118.15 polymer modified mortar which is the top um, standard. Below that is the ANSI A118.11, which is EGB, e EGP, exterior grade plywood. Uh, for That's what you use. You can also use that on a uh, wood subfloor. What you can't use is an ANSI A118.4 thin set. That's a polymer modified mortar, but it is not rated for plywood subfloors, it won't stick to it. So you gotta use uh, a good quality A118.11 or A118.15 thin set. If it's A118.11, it's, uh, if it's A118.15, it's also A118.11 and 0.4. So the higher numbers will include the lower numbers, the lower numbers do not include the higher numbers. So this is what we're gonna be using. I'm going to talk about this thermal pack, pack in a little bit. Okay, so not only is the correct type of type of mortar important, it's also important that the floor be clean and free of dust. So that you make sure that your the thin set is sticking to the floor and not to the dust. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to vacuum and make sure I want this get as much dust as I can. And then before I'm installing before I install the membrane. I'm gonna wipe it down with a damn cloth and we'll clean it off that way as well. And that does two things. It gives the plywood a drink so it doesn't suck the moisture right out of the, the thin set and it cleans, cleans the floor. This just happens to be the right size. For here, so you want to make sure you leave a, a space on either side. You don't want to cut it tight. This is a heated heating system, it will extend the contraction. So, when we're putting these together, we're going to try and make these these pucks line up. You don't want it like that because then it makes it harder to run the wire. So you want to try and make these line up. So 
so they can get the, the pucks to line up and they can have my gap over here. So the way I usually do it, I will usually cut everything and have all the floor completely covered with the loose membrane all in place. Then I'll pick up a section at a time and cement it down. This way I'm not going back and forth from a mat to, to the thin set and back to the mat. That way the mortar is not sitting in the bucket uh, for too long. You just use it all up at once. So this is uh, the way I do it. So if you prefer to cut a piece down and cement it right, right in, that's fine also. I just feel it's quicker to cut everything in and then cement it down all at once. Okay, so the recommended trowel is quarter by three sixteenths B notch. I don't have one of those, so I'm just going to use a quarter by quarter. Okay, so this is the uh, 254 Platinum. I got it mixed up just a little bit looser than normal. Now, I'm going to use the back side of the trowel to key it in. I'm going to use the notch side of the trowel. And this one here, because it's a little bit big, I'm going to keep it on a lower angle, on a lower angle, just to reduce the depth a little bit. That's very good transfer.
I've got a roller, it's a, a, like a 75 or 50 pound uh, roller. You can use a roller, you can use a float, you can use a, a, a trowel. I just like this old wooden float for a smaller job because you can get a good amount of pressure on it, make sure you embed it into the thin set. Yeah, but because of this coronavirus thing, it just didn't work out. So, um, I see if I can uh, do like a video chat with him and um, get him on this job virtually. That's looking good. Yeah, I'm leaving at that, uh, that, that area over here and this area over here because it's just a pain here trying to go in and out. Yeah. And then I'm going to go so far over here and that probably it for the day. Using um, this is a really good system. Nice. System. Yeah, that looks good. So you uh, went you went with the three inch spacing on it. How'd that work out for you? It perfect. It actually see over here, this area over here. Uh, first, I had a line that went straight down with where this is right here. I had a line that went straight down. Yep. But I was about a foot long over there. Well, maybe, not maybe a foot, maybe two feet long. So I. I did this, well, this is zigzag, yep. came around, and then it was perfect over there. And then I, I see the, the channel wall over there at the end. Yep. I, uh, I put some pins down, I put a piece of towel on top just to hold it so I'm not trying to, um, you know, it doesn't get in my way tomorrow when I tile that area. It'll just be glued down with the pins set. Good, good. Yeah, keep in mind, like I said, huge benefit of the system is the fact that you can do either four peg spacing, three peg spacing, or you can go down to two, three, two. So when you get onto a project, if there's been any changes or possibly they've moved something around, it gives you a, a huge advantage when you've got that much space that you can uh, you can change it from a two, three, two to a four. That gives you a lot of versatility on the project. Yeah, so, you know, um, why don't you explain exactly, uh, well, not exactly, but what happens when you have Right. give you primary heat source um if you want to go down to two so three two let me, let me just clarify that a little second right so if you use this yes yes that gives you, that gives you primary heat and be considered a primary heat um also if you go with the two three two so the advantage is, let's say hypothetically, you get onto a job and you had a, a wire that was designed to do roughly 150 square feet at three pegs. And that's typically what I tell people to figure on is three peg spacing. So yeah, the, the versatility of being able to go from three peg spacing to four or down to two, three, two, what that'll do for you is say you had a project where it was 150 square feet you had figured for, and you had 150 square feet worth of wire. If you get out to the project and they had made some changes, if you were to take that and move it to a four peg spacing, you would get closer to 200 square feet with that same wire. On the other side of things, 
if you needed to tighten it up a little bit and you took that same wire that you had figured for 150 square feet and you did two, three, two, that would get you somewhere down around 125 square feet. So with one wire, it gives you the versatility of going somewhere between 125 square feet and 200 square feet. So it really helps you out on the field when you uh, when you have some challenges. Yeah, better. Because these wires, you can't cut them. Whatever length you have, that's the length you have to use. And you have to use the entire length. And it has to be embedded in the fencing. You can't, like, for example, over here, let me, where I have the vanity, where there's no wires, you can't put this wire under where the vanity is going to go because it traps the heat underneath. So you, you, you want to stay away from that. So um, that's all going to be tiled there, but there's not going to be any heat because the vanity goes all the way across, so there's nothing to be heat over there. Right. And and over by the toilet, I stayed like a foot away. So when you know, if you're if you're on your, well, probably it's even more like more than a foot. If you so when you're sitting on your doing your business and you the uh, yeah. feet are on the uh, on the tile, you got nice toasty feet, and you're not melting the o ring. Exactly. Yeah. And another good trick is to, to always try and keep it a good six inches away from the wall. And that does two things for you. One, you don't use up as much wire and people typically aren't walking that close to the wall anyhow. But what it really does for you at the end of laying the wire, if for some reason you ended up with a bit of wire left over, you can just simply run that around the perimeter to use up what you had left. So you don't have to pull up any material and refigure it. You just run it right around the perimeter. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's actually a great tip because a lot of times, as you say, um, you know, you figure the job, then you come back and they added, they moved the wall or they made the vanity bigger or they did something or other. Now you've got uh, a wire that's a little bit longer than you, you had planned. Yep. But, you know, if, if you figure that you're going to be like six inches or even nine inches away from the wall, because no one's going to stand, no one's going to stand Right. Like, like this up against the wall. No one's going to do that. Yep. So you're always going to be at least a foot away from the wall. Absolutely. Uh, so that gives you the best of of um, using an extra wire if, um, if you need to. So now let me ask you a question, right? So if you have, can you combine? So if you do all, if you say you, you do, um, Two, three, two spacing, or say you do three spacing, and you want another part of the area to be a little bit warmer. Could you combine the three spacing and two, three, two spacing, or should you just keep it all one? No, that would be fine. Just keep in mind uh, when you're placing your heat sensor, uh, you want to be uh, cognizant of where you're placing that because that'll d depend on um, how, how the floor is heated up or how it's warmed up based on where it's placed. So if you have it so somewhere the in the center of three, it's probably um, not going to read the same as it was in the center of two, three, two. But yes, it will work fine. Okay, so that's just another another uh, makes it even more versatile. Yes. Uh, yeah. And then uh, this mat um, has a hydration hydration vent, so there's no restriction on uh, modified or unmodified thin set. No, we so, recommend we recommend with that use uh, use a modified thin set. Um, the hydration vents also work to help anchor as well to mechanically lock it into place. And when you use something like, I believe you have the 254 Platinum there on site. When you use our, uh, say, 254 Platinum along with the Strata heat mat, the wire, and you're using Permacolor Grout, that sets you up for a 25-year system water warranty with Laticrete. And that includes uh, labor and material from a company that's been in business over 70 years now. So it's a good backup yeah. for you. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's actually a very good point. Because, um, you know, you get some warranties. I don't know, you get some, some manufacturer from a no-name, like, waterproofing membrane, and they say they're going to guarantee it for, for 10 years. Yep. And then you have a problem that the system fails, you have a problem, they say, here, here's a, here's a hundred, $100 roll of uh, membrane, that's your warranty. Yep. You guys don't. No, we don't. We No, we don't. We, we haven't been in business for 70 years by doing things like that, so... Uh, family owned and operated. They stand behind every product and every customer. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I've known you for, for, uh, for a number of years now. And one really important thing that I think is 
a lot of guys in the field don't realize they should get to know their reps so that if they have a problem or if they have an issue or if they need to know something, they know who to call. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, it's rare that you have a problem, but how often do you and I talk and it's just uh, just to kind of shoot over an upcoming project for some interesting – there's so many different changes in the way people are yeah. building that it's good yeah, to – Exactly, it's not just if you have a problem. It's like if you have – like, like uh, I don't know, if I have a question about the – like, for, the, for example, this this um, thermostat, right? Um, I, I didn't realize that they had turned it from horizontal – Yep. So vertical. Yep. And the box was, was vertical. So I gave you a call and I said, you know, can we use like some other manufacturer's uh, uh, th- uh, thermostat? He said, you said, why? And I said, because. And you said, no, I changed it. So now my problem was solved with just a phone call. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So awesome. So, well, I won't take up too much more of your time. I know you're in the middle of uh, uh, installing the tiles there, but uh, let me know. Give me some finished pictures and uh, we'll kind of go from there when you get wrapped up. I appreciate everything. Okay, no problem. I will actually um, send you a couple pictures now in the, in the state that it's in now. And then when it's all done, I will, um, you know, give you some more pictures. Awesome. Be safe. Put on your uh, put on your mask. Yeah, not, not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to you later. I'll see you. Thanks. So this is the hot side and this is the cold side. This has to be buried under the tile and this part here goes up the wall. So hey, here where I am, there's no conduits. It's just a cavity wall, and you snake up the wire and the, and the sensor up the cavity wall. If you've got conduits, which it would be a pipe, like a tube that goes down from, here, from the box down to the, to the floor, then you have to have two separate conduits, one for the, for the heat wire and one for the... Uh, sensor wire. You can't put them in the same conduit because some, you could have some electrical interference between the two and throw it off. Uh, it can't can happen. So just uh, something to be aware of. If you've got conduits going from that box to the floor, it has to have two conduits or you can have one conduit, have the wire of the co- uh, one conduit and then just have the sensor wire going up in the cavity wall and into the box. Area marked out there, line just so visually I can see where not to go. The vanity is going to be in this area here, so this is so now the minimum is three inches, but you can stay the minimum is three inches, but you can stay further away because you're not going to stand like like right here. So you could even stay like six six inches away from the wall and then you'd be fine. But the minimum is three inches all the way around. So I'm going to put this wire in and take it from there. So because this is thicker than the wire, I'm going to have to cut that out. So I'm just going to make a mark here. These are the options for the wire. Three, 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 or you can do 
four, four, four. Yeah. It gives you more watts per square foot. If you do the two, three, it gives you a warm floor faster and it gives you um, more heat yeah. for that floor. So that you would do this if it was like a primary heat source. Or if you just want to warm the floor. This is the option I'm going to do. I'm going to do three, three, three. Then four is if you want less heat. When you put the probe in, if you do a two, three combination, two, three, two, three, the heat, the sensor has to go in the middle of the two. A three obviously goes in the middle of the three. So these are the, the options we have. So this, this is my option for this one here. Three, 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 three. Now, the length of the run, there is no restriction on the length of the run. So this is over 10 feet. So I can just run a straight. Don't have to put any kinks in the wire. I don't have to make any turns to release tension in the wire. It can, it can be as long as you want. So depending on which you choose to do, you're gonna get the wire that suits that square footage. You're gonna use more wire with the 3-2 option than you are with the 3 option. And you're gonna use more wire with the 3 option than you are with the 4 option. So, you know, you go by the type of pattern you're gonna to use to order your wire. There's a chart in the book to figure that out. So this little white marker here on the wire, that tells you that you're halfway the length of the wire. So you just take a quick look around. This is the area that I got done, and that's the area I need to get done. So I look like I'm actually in, in pretty good shape as far as the amount of wire. You can always just pull it up and reconfigure it if you have to. It comes up really easy. This is a little bit fatter as well, so I'm going to mark it. And cut that out. wire all down and I actually was a little bit long over here so I had to pull this row up and do this and go a little further in and it actually comes to where that that line is so this is wires only now I just gotta put the sensors in 
So the sensors have to be at least six inches, six inches in. So I'm gonna actually put in a couple feet in. So. Same way, probably take over here. So this is the second test. If you can see that, second test for the wire falls within that range. It was 14.8 to 16.4, so it falls within that range. So that's the second test. I'm gonna do. test this way as well and I'm going to put that on the alarm if I touch these together you'll hear the beep so I test one wire and then I always test the other one as well then test the thermostat as well Now, this is a sensor, so depending on the temperature of the room, it's going to give a different reading. So when I took this out of the box, it was in the, in the van, so it was cold. Now it's being sitting in, the, in, the, in this room, so it's warmed up, so the, the reading is probably going to be different to the initial reading. You just want to make sure that you record the reading. And then you test the other one as well. Okay, so this is a... Another very important. This is a very another very important point. Regardless of whether you're installing a heated floor or not, when you cut your tile up, now there's no baseboard on here. This is going to be the baseboard right here. There's no baseboard on this on this uh, on the walls here. Um, I suggest if there is, you take it off. However, so just cut your tile away from the wall, leave a gap, leave room for, for movement. As long as the baseboard covers the gap, you're good. You don't want to cut it tight. Don't want to cut it tight like that because then there's no room for expansion and contraction. You want to make sure you leave a gap. If the baseboard is on, the baseboard is already on, then you are going to have to leave a soft joint. So you're going to leave a gap between the baseboard and the tile, and then you're going to silicone that so that the tile can expand and contract, especially true when you have a heated floor. Also they have an additive for 
the mortar. They call it the thermal pack. And this actually increases, see if I can find it in English here, here it is here. Uh, reduces uh, heating cycle times wire, transfer heat quicker, shutting down system sooner, reducing energy costs by 15%. So this thermal pack will reduce your energy costs by 15% and increase the efficiency. Now, I have a light colored tile on here and it's going to have a light colored grout. So I'm actually not going to use this and the reason for that is because when you mix this with your mortar, even if it's a white mortar, it's going to turn it black. And so you've got to weigh the benefits against the, the detractors. So in this case, it's going to, it, because it's black and I'm going to be using a light color grout, I don't want to have the problem of, of you know, thin set coming up the sides, have to scrape it out. And, you know, I just don't want to have to deal with that because of that, of the, of the color of the tile and the grout that I'm using. But in most cases, you can use this. The other time you don't want to use this is if you're using like a Carrera marble or a, or a marble. Marble, you always use light colored. Uh, you always use white thin set. Carrara marble is translucent. Uh, it doesn't mean it's transparent. It just means if you put a light behind the tile and you shine it through, you're going to see the light through the tile. So that the, the color of the thin set is important when you're doing marble tile. So you don't want to use this if you're doing a marble tile or a natural stone tile. But uh, if you've got like a darker tile and you're using darker grout, this is great. I would recommend the use of this. I'm just not going to use it in this case because of, of the situation I have. For your, you know, whatever project you got, you can, the, uh, the thermostat is up 15 amps, so you can use any combination of wires as long as it doesn't exceed the 15 amps on the thermostat. So, uh, I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, if this is the first time seeing my videos, my name is Sal Larson. I'm a tile contractor in the Boston area. Been a solar tile for uh, over 35 years. More than 35 years. So check out my YouTube channel. I've got almost 800 videos all to do with tile. Um, leave your comments in the comment section. If you can check me out on Patreon, that's great. I'm gonna leave a bunch of links in the description, in the cards, and in the end screen. Uh, for, for useful things that you might for things you might find useful uh, most important of all don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching my video okay so this is this is a ladder creek thing set the one that I showed you earlier the platinum and it's the according to directions. So, I'm going to flat trial first. The fill all the Make sure everything is set. I got some lines here that I'm going to go up to.
back to the top. Okay, so the tile installation is as you would normally install your tile with the correct coverage. Uh, I typically back butter large format tiles. Uh, I use a steel trowel. You really don't have to worry about the wires because they're below the mat. So just install your tile as, as usual. Even though you're installing your tile as normal, just be cognizant of the fact that you have a heat wire that you're laying your tile over.
Okay, that's all we got for today. Okay, so yesterday I came and I knocked out the clips. I don't like to leave them over the weekend. It took me about 10 minutes. But I just put them in a corner and now I'm going to finish the floor. Okay, so that's the entire floor. I just gotta test that. Okay, so this is the third and final test. Test exactly the same way as you did before, but this time we record the results in on that sheet. So when that's done, the testing phase is completed and the only thing left is to grout. I am not allowed to install the thermostat. Uh, that has to be done by a licensed electrician in my area. So that's what's going to happen. The electrician is going to install it. So I'll leave the test results for the electrician to sign and my part of this installation is completely done. 16.1 Okay, so the only thing left to do here is just going to knock out these clips. For these couple of spots here i tested the wire the thermostat this is the thermostat and this i can't install this this has to be installed by a licensed electrician so i'm going to leave the test results and this here for the electrician and he'll install it and he'll install one sensor wire and the other one will be a spare best to make sure all your grout lines are clear like pretty much everywhere they're clean but sometimes it's just unavoidable to get some bleed through so when you clean that out remember you have heat wire under under the tap so don't go too deep just clear it out just enough for the grout best to do it the next day when it's still relatively soft and don't go too deep just enough for the grout so I just want to make it perfectly clear when you're scraping out the cement in the grout lines do not go too deep this is where most wires get damaged exactly at this step here when you're cleaning out the grout lines you forget the wire is there and you go too deep and you cut it so be very 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 careful
that's it. The strata mat or the strata heat has been completely installed and finished. My part is done. The only thing left is, as I said, the thermostat has to be installed. Otherwise, I am completely done with this. Uh, really good system, easy to install, and made by a great company. This is the shower, just in case you were wondering, which it was done. Uh, this is for another video. This the shower. So hope you enjoyed and found this useful. And thanks for watching. And uh, don't forget to subscribe.